Good day and welcome back to the Student Starcraft AI Tournament. This week's broadcast is all about carriers, so without revealing too much about what's going to happen, there will be carriers. As one of the actors in this beautiful game, we have got for you a Garnbot by Aurelien Lermant from France. I tried to drop the French pronunciation, but I'll see how far I'm going to get with that. And as the blue Protoss we've got Daedalus, which is, I think, either a reference to Daedalus, the architect of old, or an acronym of all the players and the humans coding this gallant AI. As you can see, Garnbot has already expanded and taken uh, a base right across the map, all the while while three zealots are waking them, making their way across the map, going to attack this sunken, I think it's going to be, and we've got two zerglings and a sunken, four zerglings, so the lings are tanking the damage, the sunken is doing the damage, and by the time the lings expire, one of the zealots is nearly dead, and now the zealots are going to town on the drones, which will set back the um, the Zerg's build order considerably. This drone looks like it's trying to build a sunken colony, but it's not succeeding, but with the rallies and the sunken, the Zealot th threat for now has been dissipated. Although, as you can see, the drone saturation isn't all that good, then again, the Protoss probe saturation isn't either. And we've got two gate pressure going on for a bit, we've got one more sunken, and for the time being we've got a nice stalemate, with uh, Zerglings versus Zealous, and the Zealous are bugging out beautifully. And as you can see, another drone is going to take another base, because that's basically Garm's game plan. Just take the map and do something ridiculous behind that, which is tech to a lair on an army supply of one. Now, these Zealots are panning out across the map, but uh, at this base another Sunken is going to be morphed. And now the Zealots seem to have gathered a force of four, and they are mulling about on the middle of the map. Meanwhile, Garnbot saving money for another base, but it hasn't really got the money because it lost so many drones uh, defending this base. This drone looks like it's going to do something. Oh, and the drones now burrow, so that's another interesting way to spend your money. And as you can see, it bugs out the Zealots, because every time they unburrow, the Zealots come back, but then finally kill all the Zerglings. Is that an efficient game plan? No, it's not, but it is fun. So, uh, so much for that. Meanwhile, back in the Protoss base, we've got another gateway, and as you can see, the drone numbers are climbing higher and higher, so I think that either these zealots will have to find a more fruitful target than links in the middle of the map, and as you can see too, oh, let's not, oh, well, it can't be helped. I always thought this um, open BW replay of you might crash when I selected a killed unit, but obviously that's not the case. So Garnbot taking the third base, having in the main base now not that many workers, but now 17 workers in total. And as you can see, Lings are coming from all directions, meanwhile the Zealots are checking out the map, and army supply-wise it's 40 to 2, so that's not really fair. Then again, with three bases against one, I'm sure Zerk could come up with something beautiful. This zealous army then is cruising about the map, going to find this base, or is it? No, they are, yes they are, and now they've found it. So, as you can see, if you've got about 20 zealots, one sunken and a lot of drones don't really make um, a beautiful defense. And finally the sunken is carved up by the zealots, and the zealots come back for the drone, but head back before uh, finishing the job, and only now a handful take a couple of sw uh, swipes at this hatchery. Meanwhile, Garnbot is just flooding units in from all directions, and, well, that's going to be its game plan for a while. The Extractor will be killed too. There we go, and now we've got a, an army of about a lot. Zealots, oh, and look at that. We've got two links burrowed here, and every time they uh, the enemy army passes, it's going to head back. Now, where is the Zealot? Uh, there, oh, well, there was a Lurker, obviously and all the zealots died to it. Sorry I missed that. I do try to, to catch everything, but I just, I'm not very successful at it. So now we've got a lurker again, and this goon is trying to attack it by moving on top of it. It's not really working, not at this point, and the links are now in, so I think... Well, I already revealed there would be carriers, didn't I? So that's a bit of a, a pity. But uh, I think the, oh, the lurkers are going to burrow here for some reason. We've got about four, I'd say, three or four, because we've got some other combat units making an army supply of eight. 
thus giving the Protoss the chance to recuperate with a handful of gateway units and a cannon at the high ground, always useful, especially if there are lurkers in the offing. And Garbot just sticking to two base for the time being, not really taking any more bases, but going for a very fast hive with only Inspire, Den and the Queen's Nest and the Hive of two bases, now taking another one. And Protoss is sitting back in its base doing basically nothing of two cannons. Worker count is okay, but it's not really doing anything, and I think that is because uh, this gate, Stargate is flashing. And yeah, we got the beacon, so you might guess what this is already. Now we've got the air force in the air of Garnbot, and it consists of one muter with some ground support. We've now got two muters, but we've got a couple of goons as well, and the first carrier is out with the cannons and the goons. I think it can fend off a nice number of muters. Garnbot, meanwhile, took another base, so it's now four versus one, and this carrier is. Uh, oh yeah, I want to talk about carriers, so. Uh, what you can see here is that these uh, lurkers, which have come back from here, have got no answer to the carrier, and this muter is doing its best, but it's horribly messed up by these interceptors flying about and going back into the carrier. Basically, this means this AI's mutilisk is horribly confused. And that's the problem, because uh, every time the interceptor gets low, it heads back to the mothership, retanks its shield, and then goes for another run. It does pitiful damage about... Oh, I can't show it, about 4 or 5 or 6. It's not really much by itself, but um, as the carrier confuses the enemy, its interceptors can be quite effective. And as you can see here, these muters don't really know what to do. We've got a carrier here. We've got one here, and all the lurkers are getting, uh, well, they can't really get low. There are five lurkers, which might regenerate about as quickly as this carrier can damage them, with the occasional couple of hits on a mutilisk in there too. We've got a queen, and for good measure, Garnbot taking the natural of the enemy, which is a pretty BM thing to do, but then again, what can you expect of a bot that is called... No, it doesn't have, doesn't have anything to do with the name. Meanwhile, this carrier in the middle of the map could have been shot down by all these muters ages ago, but these muters had just totally confused, and so is this um, this Hydra, totally confused by all the interceptors. And they don't really dare attack these couple of goons. We've got a carrier here. Meanwhile, main of the Protoss is mined out, so now it's long distance mining, and uh, doesn't really attack this. Um, base here. Oh, we've got an egg, so the question will be, is it going to be guardians, or are they going to be devourers? And it's a devourer. And finally, the devourer has got the right idea. It's not targeting the interceptors for some reason. It is uh, targeting the carrier, but uh, I think that the carrier, we've got two carriers now, are going to clean up, and although the uh, carrier is going to suffer a little bit of shield damage, this Hydra doesn't really have a clue. Oh, this one's attacking the carrier too, that's good. And I think between the Devourer and the two Hydras, this carrier might go down. Yep, there it goes. Oh, and the dying shots of the Interceptor take care of the Devourer. So now we've got only one carrier left, a couple of goons. And as you can see, Garm's all over this with the tech. Uh, the drone numbers are okay, especially since uh, Daedas can only long distance mine. <laughs> But now the the lurkers are there. Oh god, the lurkers have reached the ramp, and all the probes coming down and going up the ramp are going to die. There is a cannon, and it is still somewhat alive. There's a backup cannon here, and these two carriers are doing massive amounts of damage, because as you can see, uh, the only unit which was somewhat capable of dealing with enemy fire was the devourer, and oh, there is a devourer now. But now we've got two carriers, and two carriers are pretty quick in dispatching devourers. There's a one carrier heading off to the, the Zerg main base, for what counts as a main base, because there is tech here, there is a base there. A uh, base here, and this base here is being depleted by these carriers, killing off all the drones. But still, I, I'd find it hard to say who is ahead in this game. And this carrier is doing its best to kill all the drones, and as you can see, the drone numbers are a little bit down, but versus five probes, in the long run, I think Zerg's got a pretty good chance to win it, even though these two carriers here are doing massive damage to everything Zerg. A couple of Hydras killed, a Guardian going down, drone going down, Hydra going down, 
Uh, no shots fired at this hatchery yet. Will be soon. And there goes the Guardian. And look at all the damage these carriers are doing with just the two of them. And the strange thing is that this carrier here has now dispatched all of the drones. And we've got the Hive. The Hive is being targeted by one carrier. Garbot doesn't know to do, uh, what to do about it. But it is now invading the main base of Proctor somewhat. These two carriers are going to try and stop it. Always a good plan. So there goes another Devourer. We've got a Guardian. And the Guardian is going to go down as well. Supply-wise, Protoss is doing great. It's killing humans left and right. It's being very cost-efficient. But um, Zerg has just got more bases. Oh, look, there's a, a Lurker trying to attack the, uh, the, the Interceptors. That's not going to work. We've got a handful of Muters out. And as you can see, these carriers are still completely untouched. Now going to liberate the natural, I think. Okay, so speeding it up just a little bit because we can't ponder on um, this state of affairs. It's not really fruitful. Uh, these carriers doing their best, losing a little bit of shield damage, going to defend versus the guardians. But slowly and surely the Protoss base is being consumed. Look at that. Just morphing either a guardian or a devourer. Oh, it's a guardian. Mi on the middle of the in the middle of the Protoss base, <laughs> and as you can see, the Protoss base is getting smaller and smaller, and the Queen is fast enough to, to escape the wrath of the intersec interceptors. Protoss uh, probe count is going up again. It was at about five, but this one inter one carrier here took care of the entire entire main. Oh dear, that's not good, because as these carriers are here, the Zerg has now got free reign of the main. Fortunately, the Zerg army is pretty uh, non-existent, it's about 12 supply. Um, a lot of that is in ground army, which has a hard time moving up the ramp. Now one carrier is coming back, where are the other two? They are here, I don't know why. And this carrier has now a very hard time versus 1, 2, 3 base. Hydra basically, and 4, 5th base coming up. So this one carrier is doing what it can. These two carriers have stalled for some reason and I don't hope that the replay is bugged. But as you can see the, the probe numbers are going down, they're sinking like a stone. We've now only got one. Proptos has got some money but it can't really spend it at this point. And this one carrier is just fighting for its life and the life of the Protoss base. But as you can see, the Protoss base is going down rapidly with the links, and that's the GG. But that was a brief demonstration of how effective a carrier can be. And that brings us to... Uh, well, that was a, that was a quickie. Uh, brings us to another game. We've got a Red Terran. It's a Whopper by Sir and Klett. And it's Thomas Vida, also known as Xim, or simply as the Carrier Bot. And I hope I'm not giving away any secrets. It's been around since forever. It's very brilliant, had the highest ELO rating of all times, and it's going to do carriers. And that's all I'm going to tell you about this. A Whopper is a decent Terran, and I chose him. I didn't see the game yet because I don't like to spoiler myself. I didn't uh, watch the game yet, but I'd like to demonstrate how effective carriers can be in the face of a good Terran. Now this good Terran is going for a barracks with a couple of depots and quickly teching into, I think it's going to be a factory, yep there it is. Um, all the while Protoss is taking a very quick expansion behind two cannons and it's going to build more cannons. This also is something to watch because you cannot find a bot which does a better war with cannons than Ximp and that's a fact. So behind this we've got a core, we've got a lot of, lot of probes and a handful of zealots playing tag with the SCV. The probe here is still alive too. No one is too concerned about chasing it and Whopper took a relatively quick uh, command center at the natural too so both bots can be said to favor an, an economic opening. More cannons, look at this wall off. On every map it can do this. It just fits in a certain space, an optimal situation of nexus uh, but mainly Forge, Pylon and a lot of cannons, so this is very hard to break for any Terran as we will see later, especially in the early game. Now Whopper has sniffed out the fact that there are going to be carriers, 
of course, uh, it did have a scouting SUV, and perhaps it knows um, the Ximp mod, so it has a global idea what's going on, taking a third very, very quick for a Terran. Army-wise, it's doing okay, it's 23 versus 8, but as you can see, we've got Fleet Beacon, and we've got four blinking Stargates, and I'm not giving away any secrets if I say it's all going to be carriers. One, two two already, I think it must be assumed that this is the plus one weapons, although I can't show you yet because that function is not ready in this OpenBW replay viewer, and this is going to be a boon for Terran, because this is an integral part of Sim's game plan, it's following the borders of the map, and it's going to find all the bases, because most maps in Brute War are laid out like this, you've got the bases on the outside, the naturals on the outside too, and the thirds on the outside, so what's happening is that these four carriers have got a lot of time to build interceptors, going to hit this base, which will be defenseless first, then this one, then this one, and then arrive all round the back in the main base, while the main army of Terran is here, so it will have to first go and defend here, which it will, by the looks of it, not do. Sacrifice your latest base, always a good idea. And meanwhile, the next wave of carriers is uh, moving out, taking a base in the direction of the carrier's path, so they are somewhat protected. But by now, the Terran army is getting pretty big, and that's going to be a problem, because if this army were to move into here, the tanks could range down all the cannons, and by now we've got enough Goliaths to take down a lot of carriers. That said, oh, we've got raids! We've got raids! Oh, dear, oh, dear, oh, dear. Whopper is about from the same time as Xim. So it's got a dedicated build against it, and look at this, we've got a handful of wraiths, about five or six I think, and they took down all the carriers in the world. Oh, oh well, half of them. And this time the carriers have got a little friend, it's called an observer, and it can of course scout cloaked units, so this time the Goliaths will have to come off the line. The Goliaths have come off the line, now sieging up the main base, and as you can see these carriers have got nothing on them. Now we'll have to see, because now the wraiths are coming, but as there is an obs Oh, they killed the observer first! Did you see that? They scan, they kill the observer, and then kill all the carriers. That's how it's done. And these carriers, although a formidable threat, you can see all the wraiths were just killing the carriers and not the interceptors, and the main army of Terran is now at the base of Ximp. I thought Ximp would, wa would win this, but obviously it doesn't. And by now it's got a fleet of two carriers doing weapon upgrades, and that's a lot of Corsairs, and that's an unfortunate, um, well, hard-coded switch of Ximps. As soon as it spots enemy air units, it will just go full Corsair and ruin your day, if you are an air unit. Of course, Corsairs can't really do much against this, and that's a pity. Perhaps with Disruption Web, which we saw last week by a bot which was four years old, and uh, now the Terran army is on the roll. Look at it, all the bases, nearly all the bases taken by Terran. And though Protoss is setting up shop in, uh, well, it was the third, in the same fashion it took the natural. Now there are a lot of Goliaths loose in the base, and um, hello, you've got a lot of Corsairs for some reason. Now, the Wraiths are coming, the Wraiths are coming, and this will be an interesting fight because, as you know, Wraiths don't do awfully well against Corsairs, and look at the Corsairs go, the Wraiths are clustered and they die almost instantly. Oh god, oh god, oh god, that was not good. And as you see, um, the whole Protoss is kind of isolated, but these Corsairs really do, num uh, do a number on these uh, poor little Wraiths. The third base of Protoss mining diligently, but Terran's got this, look at it, harvesting gas all over the place. Look at its bank, it's almost maxed, it's doing well, we've got, um, oh hello, I saw the cloak earlier, so this must be the energy upgrade. Going for more Wraith, going for more Goliaths, and now its only duty is to make its way up across the ramp, which is going to do, because the, t <laughs> the Protoss only has got, um, well, four carriers, which can never produce enough interceptors to stop this mass of Goliaths. Nevertheless, it takes uh, forever for the Goliaths, but look at the if that if these missiles cost uh, money, oh look at that, like uh, Reaver Scarabs, this would be a very expensive war for Terran to fight. Look at that, every interceptor gets at least, well how many have we got? We've got at least 30, 40, somewhere between 30 and 40 uh, Goliaths, so times two, that's about 
70 missiles on each interceptor. And Protoss at this point has only got the income of this base. Trying to build carriers still, I think. No, it's just building interceptors. And the Goliaths are slowly making their way in. And all these interceptors can do nothing about it. But behold the view. Now Terran, of course, is maxed, mining a lot of money. And is going to uh, probably win this game. Uh, but every time... Oh, let's speed it up, please. Uh, these tanks can just range a couple of buildings, but the Goliaths refuse to move out. Um, I think that the point I was about to make is clear that Goliaths are pretty good against uh, carriers, and um, carriers are pretty good against everything else. Then again, let's go into the next game, which is the same carrier bot. It's Simp again, this time versus Iron. And Iron has been doing some cr interesting things with its build order, but I can't say they are the most effective we have seen yet. I think Iga Dimitrovich, its author, is a little bit struggling at this point. As you can see, oh, it's doing a wall off. It's learning things, but it has to put its show back together again after these first initial build orders. Oh, that's a nice uh, nice trick. Oh, let me slow that down. Uh, because Protoss is now up in defense and this SUV is not getting in. It's not letting itself get shot at. That's good too. But this is a very nice uh, gate mechanic and behind that Iron is going for a two, two gate of one base. I think that's pretty slow. It would be a little bit wiser to just take two bases or put some units out first. With this army supply is very, very low. Only now it's two. And that's going to be... Uh, where are you, my friend? It's going to be one Vulture. And of course, one Vulture won't have a lot to do against these uh, three cannons. Well, it could die, but then you'd have about the extent of its functionality versus cannons. The wait now is for a tank, and the tank is here. I don't know what's going to do in the back of the base. Taking a brief scroll, I think this might be siege mode, and if it wants to pass, or perhaps it cannot get out because the, the barracks is blocking, and the barracks is... I really don't know what's happening. And now this, this one uh, vulture is patrolling the perimeter of the Protoss base. Protoss is contained. Of course, that's not a problem, because Protoss likes to be contained. Oh, we've got a Wraith, too. So now the Wraith is killing uh, probes. That's always a good idea. And as you can see, there is no cannon whatsoever here in the main. So this Wraith is, um, well, rather diminishing the, the Protoss' capacity to harvest. A goon comes off to help and defend, but now a siege tank is there. And although iron isn't the most efficient, it's now taking a an expansion. It's got the tanks, it's got the wraiths, I think they are still in here. And they are harassing a little bit. Now with a cannon, with two cannons, so the main is safe for now. Especially with, uh, with a goon hopping about. But these tanks are reducing the base, the natural and the cannons protecting it to smithereens. And Iron is going to take this game. Oh, that's a pity. I wanted to show you how good carriers are. And here come the carriers. So at this point, the wraiths don't have cloak yet. And as you can see, the wraiths are somewhat confused by all these, uh, all these interceptors. And there is nothing... No Goliath, no Marine. So these carriers, for the time being, there are three of them, can be pretty effective versus these tanks marauding through its base. It's a little bit late though, because the natural looks like this, and all the cannons are gone, the probes are gone. A couple of turrets won't stop these carriers, but in the back of it, we've got the Wraith production. We've got, I think, a couple of turrets now in the main, and I think that there are going to be some Goliaths soon. Yep, there they are. At least one. So, I think that's it. And now we've got, oh, we've got four carriers cleaning up the entire push. I think they're going to succeed especially with more carriers coming up. So that will be interesting to see how well these carriers can do to bring this game back from almost the dead. The Nexus still stands, that's good. And this cannon is now gone, so the main is clear, the natural is somewhat clear, and I think the, the carrier should hover about here to, to prevent any further damage to this pile and the extractor. And... was an extractor? Assimilator, the extractor is of Zerg. I, I'd like to have these these 
the names here somewhere that I don't get confused that much. This tank is doing a lot of damage to the probes and these carriers aren't really interested in, in protecting it too much. But the next group of carriers will be ready soon and as Terran is only on two bases, albeit with a lot of cannons, it is mining through its main base relatively quickly and these carriers really got the numbers on anything Terran. So yeah, there we go. We've got the, the natural still intact. A couple of cannons would be nice to help um, these small incursions from oh dear oh dear oh dear from the Goliaths and the Vultures. I think there's going to be a pylon, must be a pylon. And now the carriers are going on their way to, 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 to defend or to attack the, the Terran. And now come back to kill kill the Goliaths. And Terran at this time doesn't really have the production capacity to out produce a group of four carriers and although they are taking a lot of damage uh, there is a, a home guard of carriers here too which when Protoss will get the money will... oh dear oh dear oh dear that's a very sneaky turret as you can see iron is all over this it's not relenting and Protoss is now on two bases we've got one goliath here unfortunately there's a cannon oh fortunately for Protoss of course but uh, these four carriers will have to do a lot of fighting and as you can see they're doing a pretty good job the Goliaths can't break through they get confused by these interceptors and these interceptors are so many the Goliaths they, they fire a couple of missiles and then move back the carriers kill some more the Wraith takes a couple of pokes at a carrier then dies the, the turrets go berserk as well they try to target all the interceptors doesn't really work but by this point, I think that uh, Protoss has not got the money anymore to sustain a direct fight. And now the Zealot and the Cannon have cornered the Goliath. Oh, and it gets away only just now, catches up with an SUV. So perhaps it will get repaired or it will get tagged by this Zealot. And this is strange because we've got three more carriers, they're not doing anything. And as you can see, if four carriers can do such a lot. With three more, you'd easily clean this up. The Goliath numbers with the SFEs repairing them and the, the turrets for uh, suppressing fire are doing quite fine. Meanwhile, the main base of Terran mining out, so we should be looking to take another base soon ish. Could Protoss bring it back? I don't know. The four carriers are still there, but the Goliath numbers are growing, are growing. The probe numbers are going down. The three carriers of the Home Guard are coming off now. But look at this mass of, uh, you've got the pick, the, the ones on the outskirts, and Terran is being so gutsy just building turrets into the Protoss base. We've got one here, we've got all the all the Goliaths here, and the SUVs too. I dare say that um, Iron might take another expansion soon-ish. As you can see, Protoss hasn't got the money, hasn't got the, uh, the drones. Army supply still 46 it's okay but it's going down as you can see these carriers don't seem to have any interceptors left and there is a mass of mulling uh, SUVs and Goliaths out here these carriers seem to have lost all their interceptors too now the main base is up for grabs so the Goliaths are doing are doing quite fine Terran still refusing to take another base that's strange because iron always was very good at macro Instead, all the SUVs seem to congregate here to party with the with the Goliaths. I'm going to speed it up just a notch because these Goliaths don't seem to dare to attack this one cannon. And the the Nexus is going to go down, and the cannon is quite safe for the time being. I think they are waiting for a tank, but there isn't going to be any tank because there are only carriers and no other troops. And this is just silly. Look at that. We've got about 100 army supply. Oh, now they take it. And that was the game. So, uh, so much for the effectiveness of carriers. They can defend pretty well, but in the end it's going to come down to a lot of other things too. And now I've got a bit of a problem because I'm in a bit of a, a hurry. I don't want to uh, make a three hour broadcast, but then again I want to show you what's been going on last week. I showed you the might of carriers uh, with a view to, uh, well, to, to support their, their being used more by the new protosses, I'd say. Because uh, they are such an interesting unit, they've got a lot of possibilities, they are hard to use in the modern game. And to show you what the modern game is about, I will show you this game between McGrave and B Reaver. B Reaver has been doing quite well, and McGrave has been, do has been doing quite well too, has suffered some, some strange crashes, the author has... Uh, deactivated it now, so that's a bit of a, a pity. 
Um, but here we go. Build-wise, we've got a two gate with a third gate coming up. Um, McRave is going for a more tech-heavy build. No expansions yet, so that's something to note. We've got four versus six zealots, and as you can see, Simp's not the only one with a good grasp of what a choke is and how to defend it. And this is a lot of zealots. I think they are now blocking. Oh dear, oh dear. That's a nice lot of buildings. Uh, now we've got some skirmishes going on. B Reaver slightly ahead. And tack wise, I think although McGrave is a little bit ahead, B Reaver is going to catch up soon. A couple of cannons to help defend. Oh, more cannons, presumably. And. Yep, I'd say McGrave is going ahead in the tech department. This is going to be another cannon uh, pylon. This might be um, a citadel. As you can see, we've got two gateway armies of com comparable size, and it's all going to be about the early stages, not losing your army, not really using it either. I think that with all the troops at home, a grave should turn back, leave the game, and uh, sit back on its natural, newly claimed. I think with the pressure of the natural, Bereaver is going to take an expansion to Sue too. Oh, and these three zealots are very brave. I don't think that Bereaver can afford to lose them. Claims a zealot in the middle. As you can see, that's very important because the armies are so close. Uh, but these uh, these zealots in the middle of the map of Bereavers are getting sniped by uh, McGrave too. And the question is now, oh look, here's the expansion of uh, B Reavers. The question is now, who is going to, to, pay, to pick the fight, have the better micro, and by the looks of it, this goon has grown catatonic, will be cut to pieces by the B Reaver army. For the moment, I dare say, B Reavers got the better army movement, but McGrave has got the earlier expansion, so that might just make up for it, and B Reavers got a lot of cannons, so that's four... 450 and then was this going to be it's a lot of minerals just sitting there in, in cannons not really doing anything useful as long as McGrave is not attacking now McGrave I think is going for a reaver and if I'm not mistaken B reaver will do so too so we've got a bit of a gateway reaver army uh, composition on both sides small skirmishes for the time being they are keeping themselves in a sort of equilibrium McGrave with the earlier natural is doing a little bit better I think now they're about equal. So if we now keep an eye on these armies, they're about equal in, in, in strength, in supply. But uh, the, the big question is, who is going to bring a reaver to the battlefield first? And the reaver's reaver's coming up here, the grave's reaver's coming up there, and of course a shuttle would be nice, but this is such a, a back and forth mirror matchup, you, you just got to make do with what you can. B. Reaver's got an observer. Oh, and now McGrave is going down the lower route. And the Reaver's here. While B. Reaver's Reaver's with the main army. So that's always a good thing to have, to have it with your main army. And now I'm going to have to uh, cast two fights at once, because we've got one fight here. Now B. Reaver's army is pulling back, so that will make it easier for me. This good incursion might do some economic damage, but as you can see, we've got the rallies coming from the um, from the, the gateways, and we've got the main army pulling back. And now, oh, this this carib is going to dud surely. We've got a bit of a skirmish. It's a, like a chess game, really. A couple of pawns and a couple of um, bishops with a quarter the queen, a quarter the reaver, but a small interesting fight third base being taken by McGrave, that might be the decider. McGrave a little bit behind in supply, took an unfortunate fight here with the cannons. The cannons did pay off here for B. Reaver, and B. Reaver is now on the attack. Well, uh, McGrave has got two Reavers of its own, uh, well not in the name, but on the battlefield, and they can just do so much damage. It's just about keeping your army together and uh, picking the good fight, waiting for the third to, to warp in, and then produce more units. As you can see, both mains are getting low, and here's going to be the battle. And I think, as I look at this, that the Reavers got the better, the better army, army micro. The goons in front taking a lot of shots at these zealots, and that's one zealot for free where McGrave couldn't really find an answer to that. Blocking, blocking its Reaver with uh, with the goons, and the zealot numbers are getting quite low. 
with the, the observer from uh, Bereva. I think Bereva is going to, to take this if uh, if McGrave cannot really uh, capitalize on the, the third. Again, I think a scarab which is going to dud, and that's that takes some doing because it's so easy to to use a reaver incorrectly to uh, block the scarabs to let it target only one unit. And oh dear, oh dear, oh dear! I think that's going to be a reaver within the shuttle and a high templar. So army wise, be reaver going ahead despite being on two bases. This shuttle, I've got to keep an eye on it too, because I need to know what it's doing. And the fight in the middle of the map. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Losing the observer just like that. Where is it? It's here now. The third is up for, uh, for McGrave, as you can see. The main is out. The main is out here as well. And now the shuttle, will it drop a reaver in there? It might do a lot of damage. Might do a lot of damage here too. In the middle of the map, it's all be Reaver what's um, giving the orders, and now with two high Templars, it's going to to do such a lot of oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. If these uh, if these probes get killed, where is that shuttle going? And be Reaver is now cautiously making its way up. Oh, that was a, a huge miss hit of a storm. But now these Templar will get into range, and these. These units of Bereavers, they, they do mean business. They can fight so well, they can determine. Oh, that's nice storm blanket. Unfortunately, the storms are now all gone, and we've, got, we've still got this Reaver, and it's doing a lot of damage. This Reaver, I think if there's a Reaver in there with the shuttle, they might have together killed this, depleted this third of all probes. They're not doing so, and Bereavers very slow with taking a third of its own. McGrave taking a fourth, so that's a bit of the, the struggle we've got at the moment. We've got the superior army movement by uh, B. Reaver, superior tech by B. Reaver with the High Templars, the better macro at this moment by McGrave, and this one carrier in the probe line is going to do a lot of damage. Look at this. These goons are so low, if they take one more hit, it's going to be a lot of tears and blue. Oh, excellently done. But now there are two uh, two reavers of oh that's a cruel cruel storm. Reaver moves out of the way and snipes one Templar whilst at it. Uh, but now we've got two Templar and two reavers um, camping the entrance of the natural. And McRave can't really get out. Army supply wise, it's a little bit down. Be reaver, the main is out. The natural is highly saturated. How cool would a storm drop here be? Because it would kill so many probes instantly. And the Reaver now being targeted. It moves out of the way. Look at that. How well it's doing that. It's awesome. But the army here of... Oh, look. Where? Oh, what? Oh, there is a, a drop in the back. A drop in the back is detracting the rallies and two more Reavers. And they don't really know how to deal with it. Every time they're moving off the line to come back. Meanwhile, the natural is being overrun. This one Reaver has, has made it through the high ground. Run for the hills, they said. Um, but it's uh, going to do need to fire at these uh, this one zealot, otherwise it will now die, and it still lives. This is one lucky reaver, I can tell you that. Two more reavers come to help. The shuttle now is gone, it seems. It's, it's lost itself, and now B reaver is in a bit of a problem, in trouble, because its army supply is down. Although it's got more probes, it's only got one base, and you can't really do much with one base. The natural of McGraves is still in better shape because it's been inv invaded so much. The third is running, the fourth is running, and as you can see, it will quickly uh, deteriorate. Look at the army supply. Bereaver is now ahead. It's retreating for the time being. There are a lot of uh, Templar, which can do a lot of AoE damage. Oh, uh, there is uh, two units caught here. A couple of storms are missing. But the Reaver still ahead in supply, but there was a fight coming and there are three... Oh, three Reavers, oh hello, that was almost more expensive uh, than the entire Dragoon. But if you got the economic advantage, you, you can do something like that. Oh, and the Reaver of the Reavers has found a target here. There are now a couple of Goons coming, but the Reaver is doing quite okay. He's taking a lot of shots, killing another probe, and the units of the Reavers are finding their way in here too. 
Now these... Oh, I think now that's Lucky Reaver. I'd like to see how many kills it's got, but I can't, unfortunately. And more gateway units of uh, McGraves coming off the line to help and defend here. Now, ooh, the Reaver is getting pretty low. And now the High Templar are coming as well. This might be a bit of a storm fest about to happen. And this Reaver is getting low. It's done. So now, as you can see, the Reaver is still ahead. But I don't think it can it can hold this, this position at this point. Although the, the High Templar are there, I don't think... Yeah, well, the Zealots are here too. So the Reaver with the Sublime Army Control doing so well of one base. As you can see, 10 army supply ahead despite being two bases down, depopulating the, the fourth of McRaves. And McRave is not really reinforcing this at the moment because its army is comprised of reavers and the reavers are pretty slow. So although they now cut it off, oh, I think, I think, I think, yep, I think McRave might have saved this base by this action. And now the supplies are equal-ish again. Oh, now we've got a an Archon 2 of... Oh, and the Interceptor... No, the Interceptor... The Observer it died. Oh, pity. And now you can see McGrave with an equal army supply going to town on this poor Protoss with only one base. Natural's getting very low. Nice storm didn't hit entirely. But now with the Reaver doing so much with the Archon to tank. One more shot at the Zealots. Oh, boom! All the Zealots evaporate. And a Templar of uh, McRaves 2 is the hero. Oh, this is the hero Reaver. Let's keep an eye on that because it's always nice to have some storytelling going on. Uh, the hero Reaver is still with the main army. The fourth is up, the third is up, the natural is still mining, and the natural of B Reaver is nearly out. And now we've got three angry Reavers at your natural. We've got an Archon soon. And these cannons, looks like they don't really fare well against Reavers. Like do Zealots, they just can't stand the heat. And by now there is a lot of army of McGraves coming up. And that's the key to, to victory. You don't, although B. Reaver had the superior, has the superior army micro. Ooh, and that was the hero Reaver died. That's a big, big pity. Even though you've got the superior micro, you always need to do some macro as well because now you're just uh, being being depleted. Oh, that's nice. Again, a, a reaver drop, depleting all the probes, and instead of oh, it's defending two. Where is that shut? Oh, there must there, there must be money for one scarab, isn't there? And this is going to be a huge explosion of of probes once this is done. Uh, but this uh, this one. Reaver isn't really getting it done anymore, and McGrave is all over this. It's doubling B Reaver in army supply, and although B Reaver is doing a little bit of a sortie, killing a Reaver in the long run, I don't think it can really do it because the long distance mining that's going on is going all across the map. B Reaver can't deal with that um, negative amount of crystals here. Well, there are zero minerals in there, so they don't see it. They just see it as a hindrance, and they can't really make up their mind how to pass it. Oh, <laughs> they're long distance mining from here. That's cute. As you can see, McGrave has got the superior army just mulling about in the middle, taking another base. And although B. Reaver's doing what it can with the, the meager resources it's got, the grave is going to, to grow out of control. It's tripling the army supply now. And although there is a, a very good reaver of B Reavers active now, and the grave is not doing very very much damage, every reaver shot it's doing it's 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 killing something, even if you fire two scarabs at a single Oh well you got to fire one scarab at least. You got to fire one scarab, please. Oh, and the shuttle dies. So now it's two Reavers just poaching uh, probes left and right. The Reavers got an incredible army, but where is it? Is there a shuttle here? I don't know. Now the army is coming, and it's 100 versus 22. That's not fair, but that's how it goes in life. You you do what you can until the man with the hammer comes. And the man of the hammer in this game is called McRave, and the Reaver had beautiful army micro. It defeated larger armies, better armies all of the time, nice storms, 
but in the end it's McGrave with the cavalry and the infantry and the Archons which is going to march into the base, going to call GG, going to call um, next game, because next game, uh, victory for McGrave by the way, next game is going to be Alien, our resident pet Zerg, which has been doing beautifully over the last couple of weeks, and Purple Wave, Purple Wave has been doing quite well as well, so it's going to be another interesting game of two bots which have been um, upgraded a lot in recent times. So let's go let find out what it, uh, what it is going to be. Perhaps I should do a small break every now and then because I'm getting a bit, um, how shall I say it, uh, tongue-tied at times. But uh, for the time being, and I'm doing this at considerable speed because otherwise it's going to be too boring and the cast is going to be too long. We've got a pool with an expansion route right in the time behind that. On the Protoss end of things, a couple of zealots finding the ramp, and that's uh, something which has been improving all across the board. Just protecting your, your base from scouting from any incursions, and macroing is better and better as well. So these bots can really time, well, when can I take an expansion, when can I not take an expansion, do I uh, pressure first and then take an expansion, or take an expansion and defend? Oh, and one Zerg and sniffs it. Small train of zealots making its way across the map, not really at this point. Alien going for a couple of more drones and a couple of links. Always a good idea, just balance them a bit so you won't be completely overrun. Natural of Protoss a little bit later, but it's done to three gates, going strong. And uh, no, that's not another expansion. Could have taken another expansion behind this. The drone numbers are growing out of control. It's now 18 versus 21, and that's pretty good. Especially as most of these uh, probes are mining here, and this base then is uh, largely oversaturated. Gate coming for the Protoss, a lot of zealots. Um, no much, not much mineral mining going on here until there are more zealots. And as you can see, Zerg has now got the better economy. Going for a Hydra Den, might take another base. Look at all the drones, just pumping drones like a madman. All the while keeping a sizable Zergling force, so these zealots can't just move uh, 1A to a 3A into its natural. Oh, that's interesting. Will we see a Corsair? Because the, the modern day Protosses have uh, also been incorporating Corsairs because they are so very good at killing overlords, for example. Third base of Zerg spotted. And at this time, as you can see, the worker count of aliens is higher than that of Protoss. Protoss now getting the saturation up as well. And the Zealot train is departing. We've got about 20 Zealots versus a lot of um, Zerglings. The Zerglings, though, don't really dare attack at this point. Are there more units coming? Could get a couple of Hydras. But army-wise, Purple Wave is way ahead compared to the Zerg, and that's not good because Zerg has only got one sunken at home and now building more uh, more Zerglings take another base and I think Zerg might have overdone it in the unit uh, in the eco department although it's got a lot of bases, a lot of drones only now one Hydra it needs, it desperately needs more Hydras and these these sunkens are going to get, be pretty late rallies of Protoss coming up, a couple of goons as well behind that attacking to Reavers and that's how it's done because you need to push and then tech behind that or push and take a base behind it and lo the battle the zealots are not fighting at the right place the lings though are dying at an atrocious rate and although the zealots are getting low these sunkens are too late they are way too late and a handful of a handful of zerglings is coming off a probe is coming off the line to help them fight this hydra is not really effective it's getting cornered by the zealots and it's going to die these zealots have got a lot of staying power. Now we've got two Corsairs. As you can see, we've got an army supply of 4 against 44. And by this time, it's safe to say that Alien has goofed and has uh, expanded way too much while not making enough units. Handful of Zerglings can stem the tide with the suppressing fire of this, uh, well, soon to be one sunken. And the zealots are now heading back. They could have done so much more with this goon. Now the Corsairs, if they'd all found an Overlord, there is no Hydra in sight to, to do something about that. If Zerg gets up to four bases and stabilizes, Protoss will be in for a rough, rough shake. And then it will come down to the Reavers once again, because Reavers are so good at fighting ground units, it's almost unfair. 
and Zerg has got a, a problem of its own. Now the Zerg army is growing in strength, beating back the Protoss. Where is the Protoss? The Protoss army is here, and there is a lot of... We've got two Corsairs here, we've got... Whoa, no, the Protoss army is doing nothing. This goon just, was just standing there, doing nothing. The main Protoss army is making its way over to the fourth of Zerg, but by now Zerg's got a sizable army, and that sizable army is cruising all around the map and going to uh, surround the Protoss. This one, this one Zealot don't, doesn't really stand a chance as soon as this Sunken, I think it's going to be a Sunken, gets up behind this. Zerg is not really attacking at this moment, so now it's got the economy and it's just pumping units one at a time, two at a time. And look at this, your, your Protoss Expeditionary Force, if cut off from the Reaver, will look a lot like this. And although it's fighting nicely and killing a lot of Zerglings, in the end the Zealots are going to die. And if the Zealots die, you know the next thing to die will be the Goons. So, sorry goons, but you are outnumbered and you need a little, lot of good micro not to lose too many hit points. And although they are doing quite well now with the Zealot backup, uh, they are getting low as well. The Zealots are doing masterfully. The, the Lings are not being reinforced. I wonder what Alien is up to, because it's got a lot of larvae, it's got a lot of money, it's preparing a hard muter switch. The hard muter switch should come soon though, because the Protoss army is growing and you've got six army supply in a handful of, well, about ten. I think this doesn't really um, match. And if these uh, Corsairs get in, into your, your overlords, you're going to be in up to your neck in, in combat units. So now Protoss being invited to fight under the cover of these uh, Sunkens. Sunkens doing a lot of damage, really nicely done. This Spire, if it is a Spire, is getting late, and by now we've got a couple of Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, we've got a couple of Reavers, and the Reavers are going to make the Protoss day, because they are just so powerful. These Sunkets only have got 300 each HP each, and although this Reaver is catching a couple of uh, subterranean spikes, there is so much damage being done to the Lings, and there goes the first Sunken. So the Spire is done, all the eggs, and now the Mutas must come, but by this time the fourth is under attack, and there are so many Corsairs, Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, oh dear, this Overlord, look at it, how fast it's going down. If you are going Mutus now, you must be absolutely crazy. The Zerg must have seen the Corsairs. This is not a time to have gone uh, for a hard Muter switch. The Muters are doing great though. Oh, are they not Muters? Are they Hydras? Now with the Hydras and the Muters, perhaps together they can stem the tide of this this Protoss Air Force. The Protoss still sticking to two bases and I think that's a mistake because if you've got the advantage look at the amount of workers. We've got 74 workers. This should be capped. This is insane. 47 workers of two bases. That's not good. <laughs> Although the Air Force got things well in hand the Hydra numbers are slowly increasing and if you if you don't really get your your Zealots and Reavers lined up to fight these Hydras these Hydras will take down any number of Gateway units and... Uh, what are they called? They are called uh, Corsairs as well. This poor Reaver is uh, suffering uh, suffering badly from this Muter. This Muter is having a hard time though because uh, a Reaver has got a lot of hit points and you need some, some time to kill it. In the end I think it's going to and Zerg losing a couple of drones because it's transferring them over unsafe terrain. Now this Reaver doing a lot of damage and the, the Zerg army is not really fighting optimally. Oh dear, 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 dear. That's not good, but finally the Reaver dies and army supply wise it's, it's, it's okay because there are so many, so many Corsairs and only two bases. The main of Protoss must be getting low with these 84 probes. Good day man, what are you doing? And although Zerg is scattered and fighting a hard, hard fight versus the Corsairs with these poor muters, transferring probes over unsafe areas, now taking another base, and I think that's going to be scrappy up till either Protoss musters a large enough force to ma march into the main base, or Zerg is just going to out-macro out the, the enemy. This muter taking a lot of shots at these Zealots, but the Zealots don't really care for a muter. And these Corsairs, well, they, they, they love muters really can't say anything more about it oh look at this this music it's the the opera scene again and some something is horribly dying again this poor muter this poor muter and it lives for yet another couple of seconds and then we'll, we'll do something stupid again 
the Protoss army is now all over this army wise it's it's tripling the Zerg army and in composition it's much much better Corsairs are all over it but with a couple of uh, sunken Zerg is still doing okay it's doing okay and the muters the mutant numbers are growing one Corsair is going down another Corsair will go down too shortly there are too many Corsairs and are more Corsairs being made. Yep, that one Stargate is pushing Corsairs like a madman. And it's now 102 probes, hello. 102 probes and it's still pumping probes of two Nexuses. That's insane. The, the, the army, the, the, the supply may seem so much in favor of Protoss, but that's just a hundred... It's more than doubling the, the, the amount of workers. Army supplies double too. But as you can see, Zerg's got all the expansions it needs, and there are just too many units. This Corsair, again, is, is fighting the hard fight, although these muters are very, very low. In the end, this... oh, look at that. All the muters are so very, very, very low, but there is still a lot of muters. This muters found a nice place to, to kill a lot of, of, of probes, but still doubling the worker numbers. That's insane. But Zerg is now getting out of control. We've got almost 60 workers. 60 workers, little or no tech, just pumping muters, pumping muters all over the place. And then it looks like this. And yeah, that's a fitting music for these probes. It's not much fun being a probe in this army. We had 110 probes earlier. There are now 40 dead already. That's not counting the ones which have been produced since. All the Corsairs seem to have left the building, and now the Reavers and the Zealots are fighting a lot of angry muters. Oh, this, they might be just bored, but if your natural looks like this. Okay, so we're going to call GG, but as you can see, more bases are being took by Zerg. And although Zerg's not attacking at the moment, it's just um, devolving into a huge muter spam fest. It's... the Protoss army is nearly gone. It's mined out, the probes are all... oh, there is one probe somewhere. And there are muters here, muters there, muters everywhere. I call GG going into the next game, which is uh, Lucas Moravec versus BFT Joe. BFT Joe, a Zerg based on Steenhammer, like um, many uh, new bots, because Steenhammer being a fork of University of Alberta, but still uh, it's very. It's more modern, so it's easier to now build a bot of Steenhammer than of a University of Alberta bot going for a quick expansion with a couple of zealots hammering away at it and Lucas Moravac is not at this point doing anything fancy just a two gate into a three gate and it looks like BFT Joe is not ready for that because the army size of Zerg at this moment is nil I think something must be wrong it's not building anything only now it's building something but uh, yeah there you go okay GG either a uh, either something horrible happened or something horrible happened and the bot crashed. So anyway, something horrible. Next game, it's uh, Jacob Franchik and, oh dear, let me see, Forge at home and it's a cannon rush. But Bereaver seems to have caught wind of it and is now stopping it with the probes and they are, have done so successfully and uh, one thing you should know about uh, Jacob Franchik is that it will then try again to cannon rush and by this time there is a, um, a worker was patrolling the base just to see if there's anything anything fishy going on. Now going for gateway chasing of Tranchik's probe. Tranchik at this point has got a lot of minerals, only a handful of probes mining at home. And then it's will it try to cannon rush again? No, the probe will die again. What will it do now? Send another probe. So as a cannon rusher you've got one chance and if you miss that you're in for a bit of um, a do. Now Tranchik is going to uh, build cannons in a natural, which is a good plan, I would say, but uh, it's not if you let a zealot in your, your mineral line. And this zealot is going to die, okay, so much for that. And Bereaver now is uh, happily doing its thing, just not really uh, being too impressed by what's going on. <laughs> almost losing Zeta to these static cannons and Tranchik is just spending its money in cannons or it should be, it's not doing so at the moment that's a pity look at all the money stacked 
Uh, it should build more cannons. I picked the replay for that to demonstrate what it's going to do. If it doesn't succeed in cannon rushing the enemy, it will cannon itself in and hope for the best. Of course you can do that, but... Uh, oh dear, oh dear. Here we go. The shuttle and the reaver. There are no cannons here. This is going to be bloody. Oh dear. Boom. Yep, there you go. Lots of probes dying left and right. And only one more, and that's the one, and that's the other one. So, now the main army has broken through. GG, B-Reaver, a lot better. Going into the next game, because I've got a program to finish here. The main theme of which was um, the new Protoss. Showed you a bit of the old Protoss with the carriers. Xint by Michael, uh, Thomas Weider. Showed you B-Reaver and the grave. And... One more. Which one did I show you to? Oh yeah, Purple Wave. So these are the, the three new Protoss on the block. They're doing very well. And now we've got a, a bit of a game of the Golden Oldie uh, Killerbot by Marion de Vecca versus Ion. And Ion has been trying to refine his build, being a little bit less about harass and being more about uh, solid decision making. But it has paid a price in, in aggressiveness. As you can see, we've now got one vulture, and it's camping the main, uh, well, the, the natural of Zerg. Zerg doing its thing, going, oh, I think for another lurker build, and see how it's going to pan out. But the, the expansion of the Hines, oh, that's something very beautiful. Uh, got to show you that. And that's so beautiful of this open VW, I can uh, rewind a little bit. So the Zerg is getting killed. We've got one SCV here, we've got a sunken here, so normally, until there is enough firepower to, to kill this sunken, uh, these vultures would have nothing to do with that and uh, stay out of it. But now they're going for a run-by, and this is the first bot which does a real run-by script. And if you do a run-by and bypass the sunken, look at all the drones they can kill. One, one vulture gets in a little bit deep, catches some, some spit from these drones, but all in all, the, the main mineral line is depleted. And now, Zerg is in for a bit of a problem because it's only got 12 workers raw at the natural. It's okay, but now Terran's taking an expansion, and I think this is going to be another run by soon, if I'm not mistook. Here come the vultures, the vultures. Oh, in a turret. So these vultures in the main are doing a, a job on the natural, on the, the, the lair, I mean. And Iron is just being too aggressive with the run by. Very well done. Excellently performed. Now taking more and more units. Taking sweet time. The enemy can't do much. Only one base. Oh, we've got a muter. Hello. Hello, one muter. Uh, took a bit of uh, fire from these turrets. Terran pretty safe with two turrets and only... oh well the base has been cleared by now. And for the time being I think Terran will be under pressure at least until... well the army is done. There will be Goliath soon. And a one base or a low drone number muted play against two base Terran is not really going to work. Especially if you are contained like this. Uh, it won't do. And although this muter is going to be okay in harassing a little bit, there are more Goliaths about to, to walk over, to hobble over to the contain, and then you're going to, to be in for a, a problem. Killerbot being very methodical about defending with two sunkens now, you can't really run by this, or three sunkens, and a lot of muters. So for the time being, Zerg is stabilizing somewhat. The supply discrepancy, uh, discrepancy is, is great though. Terran more than doubling the Zerg at this point. And that's just um, that's just the beginning of it because Terran is going to be so effective with this this large mech army. It's got the anti-air, it's got the the tank, it's got the the static scanning ability. And at this point, oh dear, that's Diablo again. Uh, sorry about that. Um, and that's a sign that I've passed the hour mark. If we're going into a Diablo soundtrack territory. Zerg trying to, to climb out right of it with uh, Sunkens and uh, what are these called again? Lurkers. But now we've got a Wraith to and Terran is just going to go, go all out now with three bases. Supply Zerg dipping below 40. 
some of the sunken is falling, the natural is depleted, the main is gone, and iron is too methodical, and it's very good. So if you saw that run by mechanic, it's very interesting because that's the first time we we saw that in an AI game. For those of you um, falling into this with your um, well, if you don't know what this is about, these are AIs, these are bots playing the beautiful game of StarCraft Brute War. And we just saw the first run by ever, so that's very nice. And I am going to win this game in style. I say GG, move on to the next game. Um, I had that already. And it's going to be the last game of today. And the last game of today is uh, Crazio as the Teal Terran. Crazy has been working hard on the uh, well on the website of the Student Starcraft AI tournament for one, but also been working hard at his job and probably and uh, his bot so has been pushing another update. We'll watch closely what he's going to do because as the perennial number two, he is um, well he I don't think he likes being number two all the time behind Iron at this point. And although Iron has uh, slumped somewhat with all the new build orders and the new functionality he's got to, to fine-tune, Crazio still can't touch it very well and he's got to, to, to do something to, to break that. Uh, so I'll, I'll carefully watch how his, his game plan has evolved. As the enemy I've chosen TSMU, TSMU has been working hard on the OpenW project. He's working on an, an integrated development environment for AIs. Uh, which you can uh, access through here. I'll, there, well, there's nothing to show at this point, I believe. Uh, or is there? I'll let's have a look. Can I show you that? Uh, yeah, I can show you that. It's about 40% done. Uh, the gist of it is that it is um, using the OpenBW game engine, which is a copy, a reverse engineered copy of the Brute War game engine. It's got multi-instant launcher for uh, running multiple agents. It's got wine, it's got torchcraft, and it's got a lot of functionalities and an example bot. So once this is finished, you will have a powerful, powerful tool to uh, develop your bots on this IDE. Until that, uh, I think we're going to have to make do with the bots we've got, and they're pretty good too. So no big loss and only gains in uh, the sites. Last week or the week before that, I was uh, speculating about the number of entrants we'd receive by the end of the year, by uh, December, because we, we seem to have about two new bots each week. This week we haven't had any new bots, which is a pity. But then again, uh, you can't have two new bots each week, I suppose. It's just a little bit much to, to ask. And we've got an SCV venturing out to do some scouting. Crazio playing it safe again. This SCV might take the long way back. It's scouting here as well. And Crazio is very late now with... Look at that. It's very safe with a tank and an, 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 an a Wraith. Two, two starports before even an expansion. It used to be so quick. And it's mining the these minerals. So I think this is the first two. As you can see, oh, TSMU is doing that too. So now TSMU and Crazio know how to deal with these zero mineral uh, mineral patches, blocking blocking ramps, and making making their way uh, through the the back. TSMU now taking the map with a handful of vultures. Crazio sitting back with the bunker, with the tank, with the two rates. Will we see more rates? I think we will. And so this is going to be a Wraith versus General uh, one base hybrid bio and overall oh, mech play basically because there are not too many bio units. Both players delaying the oh dear there we go. Uh, natural taken for Crazio. Crazio now taking the map with the Wraiths and the one tank. We've got a couple of more Wraiths coming up and Cloak too. So this is going to be a bit of a snarky build by Crazio. Let's see. There is no scanning at all from TSMU, so TSMU will be in a bit of a quandary. Then again, I think this uh, might very easily be a um, an armory, so Goliaths might be there soon too. And TSMU wouldn't be TSMU if he weren't building some kind of detection upon uh, scouting these rates. But behind this, Crazio is expanding a little bit. So despite being 10 supply down and up in the, um, the tech department, Crazio um, scans that he can't really... Uh, move out here. TSMU's got things well under control, taking a natural, and it's such a beautiful thing to, to watch these two great bots play because they are so adaptive. 
TSC Boo, upon scouting the rage, Wraiths just went right ahead, planted an armory, planted an eBay, and is going to be quite okay in the scanning department as soon as this SCV starts fi uh, finishes up. And Crazio is going for another poke at the enemy, it looks like. TSC Moo scouting a little bit, mulling about, and with TSC Moo you never quite know what's going to come next because he's so unpredictable. There are so many uh, subplots and crazy things his, his bots can do. The Wraith of Crazio now taking a couple of um, pew pew pews at the, uh, the Wraith or the Depot. But with uh, two Goliaths, I don't really think... Oh, it cloaks immediately, but you can't really do much against two Goliaths, can you? Now, with a one turret, two turret, TSC Moo thinking, well, let's not have any SUV uh, killed by these uh, silly rates. Going for a commsat, going for a turret. Now, as you can see, it's, it's not really lightning fast, but the adaptability is there, so... If they expand upon this, the raids might be more aggressive, might hunt in packs, the turrets might be plopped down a little bit faster. Crazy O for the time being, setting up shop with the tanks, and not at the bridges, not trying to attack, just contain the enemy a bit. It's got the, um, the air advantage, he's got the range advantage, he's got the scouting advantage, it's okay for the time being, and as you can see, he's ahead a little bit in supply now. It was a bit behind, was 10 behind, it's now about 10 ahead, so uh, doing pretty well. As you can see, he's not over-aggressive, just uh, biding his time, and he's not over-passive. In the past, Grazio used to take his natural and then sit back into 150 supply and roll out once uh, the week was over. But now he's just containing with the raids, with the tanks, and just feeding... Uh, well, this one seems to have fallen, uh, fallen off somewhere. But just feeding rallies into this, meanwhile making a little bit more raids, going for an armory two commsats, just playing it pretty safe, might take an expansion uh, while he's ahead. TSC Moo taking the back expansion, having mined out these uh, minerals here. Crazio has done the same, so he could do the same too. Going for a dropship, and this must be Wraith Energy. I don't know if that's a good decision at this point. Crazio trying to contain TSC Moo, trying to break out, and the Wraiths have now found an entry, and no, no turret cover, so they're going to kill, it looks like, the, uh, the starport. The Goliaths are stuck between the vultures and don't seem intent on um, moving out. Crazio taking a couple of kills, 15 supply ahead, and now with a dropship. So is he going to do some elevator play? It will be interesting to see. What will be dropped here? I don't know. Will something be dropped? Oh, one marine. Oh yes, that's very good. One marine being dropped in the middle of this and a couple of suppressing pew pew pews, but the marine dies anyway. So, might be a nice elevator, hoist a couple of siege tanks on this position, you've got the ramp, you've got the natural, and you can't siege anything coming in from here. TSC Moo's had enough from the raids though, uh, sending a couple of Goliaths to make uh, make away with them, and TSC Moo taking another base. So, again, we see Crazio doing quite well, and we see the, the match of a bot which goes for tech first, and a bot which goes macro first. TSC Moo now about... 20 supply behind, but with the added expansion, it's, I think it's going to catch up relatively soon, especially if this uh, army will break out, and these raids can do a little bit of harassing, but they're not really getting anything done. The raids are covered, and they just do not enough damage to uh, to kill any significant building in time. Crazio going for a third as well, going to speed it up just a tiny little notch, TSC Moo seems stuck here. And Crazio might poke here with the Wraith while the Goliaths are away, might nibble at this tank, instead nibbles at the control tower which didn't have... Oh dear, oh dear, what's it going to be? I think an Ops, or... It must be an Ops and DVT, it wouldn't make much sense to, to build a physics labs at this point. Yeah, covert Ops by TSC Moo, so... Um, prepare for the worst. A couple of Vultures shut down the fourth, and TSC Mu uh, will have to, to make a long way round the back to, to stop that, which he does. And a couple of vultures are gathering here, it looks like, but they don't really go in because there are three vultures of Crazios. Crazios camping the bridges, and although TSC Mu is camping, uh, getting, catching up in supply, Crazio, I think, is doing okay. He's still got this, uh, this place secured. Oh, we've got another dropship, what's it got now? The rates are still there for some reason. 
And although TSC Moves got the, um, the science vessels and the Matrix tank uh, catching up in supply, the fourth base has been taken down by the Vultures, and TSC Moo now trying to get something back, but the Rogers too many units of Craziers out there, and TSC Moo has taken the supply lead now, so it's a 3 versus 3 base, and although both players have been playing really cautiously over the, um, the, the minion of these bridges, it's a really... Um, both bots are really scouting and balancing their play. <laughs> and this dropship is not really uh, being productive, just ferrying units from one point of the map to the other where they could have even easily driven. Uh, TSC Mu taking, uh, taking some room for itself, but not really being effective with that too. Crazio shutting down the fourth again. Might TSC Mu would like to have a tank there with a couple of vultures just to... Uh, just to make sure of that base, and although TSC Mu is catching up in supply, he can't really get out unless he takes the, the long way round the back, and Crazio is just everywhere with, um, oh hello. Now with a rate of TSC Mu's too, so TSC Mu is diversifying as well, a couple of vessels, and the question is, what, oh it's a physical lapse after all. But is there the starboard is dead, so that's a bit of a pity. We've got a physical lapse, but no starboard or oh we've got one here without a control tower. Oh uh, we've got one here and Crazio snipes the control tower with the tanks. Crazio pushing in. Very well done. It's very hard to break the bridges, and TSC Mu hasn't got any room to maneuver anymore. Crazio take another base and Crazio's play looks so refined, it's locking down everything, playing beautifully. I think this is one of the things he, he needs to take on Iron, just uh, hold his position, control areas and make sure you get the, get the damage in with the raids, very cautious, losing a lot of hit points on this on this eBay, but then again repairing it at the back, the repair of Crazio is getting better and better. TSC Mu at this point is struggling, is contained, Crazio cat getting ahead in supply again. TSMU can't make any ridiculous tech jumps or uh, weird builds and although the units are there we've got five science vessels a lot of Goliaths, the tank numbers of Crazios are just too great at this point just locking any and everything down meanwhile taking on the fourth as well so Crazio not only contains he's also got a, a game plan to, to take down uh, the expansion of TSMU and Crazio is so methodical, so beautiful Look at that, taking another base, just creeping creeping up there against TSC Mu. And the question is, how is he going to break TSC Mu? Because TSC Mu has got a nice tank line here, although 30 supply down, some of that isn't workers. So Crazio's army is not that superior as it seems. The superior position is there though, and TSC Mu is going to... I think it would like to have a couple of nukes, but then again, Crazio has got a vessel of its own, and this is really... Uh, this is starting to look like like Flash, like a human TVT, where it's all about control, all about how many resources you can get, and Crazio's got the resources. Crazio's maxed, and TSC Mu will have to fight hard to break out of it. I don't think it's going to it's going to happen. Crazio with the tanks, with the supporting units, keeping in tight formation, raising the natural. The natural command center is down. The fourth has been eradicated. And the third is now going to be under fire, because if the tanks are on the high ground, they can attack here, they can take down this base and all. The main, of course, has been mined out for quite some time. Same goes for Crazio. But Crazio, oh dear, oh dear. Covert Ops. Covert Ops alert. Could we have nukes, please? Uh, the question is, will we have silos? Are there silos? Is this going to be a silo? That's going to be a silo. The question is, will Crazio build nukes? Because he doesn't really... He, sometimes he builds the, um, the silos and the covert ops and the ghosts, but no no nukes, and that's a pity, because that's something which might uh, prove productive. If you were to launch a nuke um, or somewhere here, or here, it, will, it might kill a lot. How could you reach here? It's, it's, it's very hard to use versus a containing Terran like TSMU. TSMU likes to harass, likes to keep his distance, uh, but when pressed, it's very hard to, to find a good point to land a nuke against TSC Mu. Of course, supply-wise, Crazio is getting way ahead. The third is now down, the natural is down, the main is down. TSC Mu is only long-distance mining. And Crazio, with a beautiful, beautiful play, I really think that he's going to, to be on his way. But then again, 
Igadim Atrevich, the author of Stone, is not sitting still either. And all the new Protoss, Purple Wave, Bee Reaver, and Purple Wave, Bee Reaver, we we'll have more, I keep forgetting, and McRave are not sitting still either. We've got the Zergs, we've got Steamhammer, we've got Alien, we've got BFT Joe, they're all working so hard. Micro DK is working hard too, so there are so many active authors at this point. It's just um, it's just anyone's game at the moment, and it's it's so nice to see that the game's still evolving, and so many people are putting in time and developing not only bots but beautiful implementations like this OpenBW project, where I can just uh, cast this beautiful beautiful game in high definition on Linux, on Windows, on I I don't know if there is Mac OS support yet, but it's multi-platform and it's just very 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 beautiful to see and Crazio very methodical taking its time it's max it's got the bank it's got the worker lead it's got 75 to 5 well that's a worker lead I'll tell you and going to wrap it up so um, this was or this will soon have been the broadcast of the student Starcraft AI tournament shown you no new bots because we didn't have any I showed you uh, the might of the carrier the might of the reaver and the might of a good TVT. My goodness, what a game this has been. If you like what you see, come visit us at our website. You can watch these games 24-7, uh, 365 days a year. You can learn how to play against these bots, and you can also learn how to code one of these beautiful AI monsters yourself. So I think if that doesn't convince you, you should have uh, watched something else. Uh, of course, if you haven't got the time, you are uh, invited to join next week's broadcast at uh, the Sunday 20 hundred hour CET again. Oh, and that's <laughs> that's an irradiated ghost. Crazio at this point uh, can just a move because TSMU has been methodically and slowly reduced to ashes. And if you look at the map, Crazio is all over this. We've got a bit of a, a tank model here because there are two SUVs parked, and these tanks can't get out. Crazio promptly taking a base, plopping down bunkers, plopping down turrets. And Crazio has got total map awareness. That's the game, I think TC Mu called the GG. Uh, look at this nice tank line. So, um, again, come and watch us, come and support us. Uh, if you are so inclined, subscribe to us on Twitch or make a donation. We are saving money for a new serve because the old one's getting very old and uh, we need a new hardware to accommodate all the growing scene. So that was this week's broadcast. Thank you for watching. Um, if you are on the Twitch chat, suggest me a nice game from time to time because I don't really have the time to uh, watch all games all week long anymore. And for now, I thank you. I wish you well, and I say goodbye, see you next week.